Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Taha Zia, and I work as the head of ACCA at Kaplan Professional Middle East. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Salman for taking out the time and uh, you know accepting the invite uh, to be uh, our guest for this webinar. As most of you would know that we run a series of webinars. We do a webinar almost every month and we try and connect uh, people from different professions and industries with the fraternity so that we can learn from the best people in the industry. So I'm grateful to Salman for taking out the time from his busy schedule. If you are one of the attendees uh, who belongs to the assurance or the advisory uh, sector, you would know that how busy it has, it's been this year from the beginning of the year. Uh, so we also appreciate you taking out the time and attending this. And I hope by the end of this webinar, all of us, including myself, will get to learn something from Salman. So thank you once again, Salman. Um, I would want you to introduce yourself to the panelist. I know about you, um, but I would want you to introduce yourself and your business, what you have achieved so far in this. Well, uh, thank you so much, Taha. Thank you, everyone, uh, and especially Captain Financial team for having me here today. Uh, uh, so I think you, you, you've set up the, the expectation very high, I suppose. Uh, so just to give a quick background of myself, I, I'm an accountant by profession. Uh, currently, I run my audit and insurance practice in the U.S. in the name of G GRB. Um, uh, we, my, as a background, uh, like other accountants, I've started my practice, so let's my professional career with one of the, one of the accounting firms. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the big five, big ten firms uh, uh, right from the beginning and managing the portfolios of the firm. Uh, for an extended period of let's say 15 years and working for both private and public sector clients and um, about a three years ago I would say uh, like many others uh, I, I caught a bug of uh, entrepreneurship and then uh, went into uh, starting my entrepreneurship entrepreneurial journey um, uh, with uh, with setting up my advisory firm with one of my co-founders co uh, and uh, I suppose uh, you know we thought that that's an end of the journey for entrepreneurship, but then uh, I suppose that was just a beginning. And then uh, we partnered with one of the ecosystems recently, uh, uh, which basically aims on and helping the startups uh, uh, right from monitoring to fundraising to finding a right investors for yourself, and then uh, you know growing uh, the businesses in the UAE. So that has been my journey so far in the in the UAE for over fifteen years almost now. And uh, yeah, I, I leave the rest to you to just uh, uh, start. Uh, brilliant. Thank you so much. So, I, you know, it's like I wouldn't have done justice to your introduction. So I thought, you know, you're the best person who can introduce yourself and people um, can know more about you up front. Um, a very contentious topic, you know, when we are having discussions uh, with like-minded professionals in the field is that what is the right time, right age, right stage in your career where you can start thinking of having your own business. And I understand businesses are like your own babies. You know, you, you invest not only money in it, but there's a lot of time, emotional investment which goes into it. And when it grows, you feel happy. And when it suffers, you feel upset about it as well. Um, yeah. So in your case, what was that moment in your career where you felt that Salman, this is the right time and the right opportunity, and here I go. Uh, well, I suppose how, like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, to each its own kind of a journey. There is no one right answer to to this. That what is the right age to start uh, your you know business or uh, let's explore new opportunities. Uh, uh, I suppose uh, what I can say is now, now you know, over a period of time, let's say support, uh, after COVID, uh, this has been one of the best markets to, or let's say, best time to start your businesses. And one of the key uh, uh, thing I can say is that it's it's the access to information that you have today is 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 unprecedented, and uh, uh, the you know the availability of information you have. Uh, uh, right from 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 various networks to uh, you know startup ecosystems to uh, maybe even the you know VC networks, uh, which which can really uh, trigger the growth or let's say give you a kind of um, support that you need as a, as a new business. Uh, however, uh, 
you know, in my case, uh, my journey has been a little bit different. I would say I come from a corporate background uh, where I worked for, a, for an extended period of time and then just jumping into entrepreneurship is generally is not the, um, is not the career path you will, will, you, will you know, normally see people yeah. taking. But um, in my case, it was a, I would say it was a bit unusual kind of a journey uh, that I had. Uh, but, you know, what I can say is uh, entrepreneurial journey is not a, it's not an easy one to have. Starting a business is like a raising a child, you know. It, they say it's a, it's, it takes a village to raise a child. And then if you have a new company, that can be, can be a very difficult child to have. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, it, and and also you know looking at you know what you're trying to do it depends really uh, if you if you're entering into a if you're if you're coming up with an idea which is completely brand new and and something which is no one has done it before and then uh, you're trying to establish a new market or doing something which is no one no one has done mm. uh, there's a completely different dynamics to this and then if you are trying to enter into a market which is uh, which is overly saturated and 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 maybe headed by large brands. Mm. Uh, see, the entire dynamics that are different, uh, and how you approach that, uh, how businesses. Because if you're entering into a saturated market, people are going to let's just because customers are really, uh, you know, they're really smart in terms of how they they see you as a business, um, and and they also do their risk assessment most of the times. If if they don't see significant in value in what you're trying to bring. Mm -hmm. uh, the chances are you're not going to succeed, and um, and and that's a very I think uh, it's a it's a major takeout which you which you need to keep in mind, and when we you know keeping that in mind when we establish our our advisory practice, uh, we wanted to bring and the and the core idea was to bring the bring the uh, given our background the the expertise and and uh, to you know bringing that expertise level which is generally available to the. To the large corporates from you know top ten or top you know consulting tier firms, and bringing them and making them available to the uh, to the SME clients. So that's the idea behind it, and, and I would say that's that's a niche that we we've identified in the market, and that's uh, that's where we focus on. So similarly, I would say any startup or any businesses, mm -hmm. anything that you're trying to start, you need to really look at your market and see uh, what is it that your customers are are. Are requiring or what is it that what is a gap in the market that so so they call it yeah mm. so uh, because i think in your kind of industry the kind with the way you have positioned yourself you work very closely with startups um yeah. and and you help them from a to z let's say from setting up raising capital maybe making pitches uh, if if it is you know up for more investment raising investment in different ways and forms. So for our audience, can you pick up a test case, the recent ones, like um, what are investors looking for or what are customers looking for? Because you were talking about value addition here. And even when we talk about our services, you know, at Kaplan, that's the first thing which goes through our mind that why will a Absolutely. customer choose, why will a customer choose us? There are so many options yeah. out there. Why will a customer choose? There has to be something different, something unique, something value adding. So what is that proposition which you feel that the SME, SMEs have brought in or any test case without naming the companies? I can understand you don't, you don't want to name the companies, but what what is it the investors or customers are looking for? Um, so yeah, definitely. The, um, I think... Uh, uh, one of the examples, a recent one, which I can give is um, recently somebody, you know, like you mentioned that we run an investor platform uh, for startups. Uh, a startup uh, approached us. They pitched multiple times uh, uh, and, and and nothing came out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they've approached other people. They've, they've done it multiple times, you know, as much or let's say for, for an extended period of, of time, but then nothing came out of it. Uh, so when we started talking to them and trying to understand what they are trying to achieve, uh, so we realized that you know it's not always necessary that you know uh, you you only need an investor or or you 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 need to bring a business a new business into uh, in, into the light. Uh, it's always important to understand where you are in your journey, and then maybe if you can find a strategic partner, that's a, that's the right fit for you. Uh, so, for for example, in that case, uh, 
uh, we, we help them finding a sort of an strategic partner where they align their business in them. Then they, they've got, a, let's say, multi family offices. They have multiple uh, businesses in the US. So one of the family offices, uh, which had a related business and they could, their solution can really bring the, uh, you know, change their business. And then mm -hmm. they started working together. And, and now we know that they're very successful, successful in what they do. So they've kind of created a uh, kind of a, you know, amalgamation of two businesses and 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 they can they are really uh, growing uh, rapidly in the UAE and that's I think that's a success story which we have uh, uh, knowing when to change or when, knowing when to uh, you know find the right partner or what are you really looking for and you know associating yourself with the right people uh, and 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 that's I would say let's say one of the test cases now. Going back to your question, uh, you know, in terms of uh, startups, how you really see yourself growing, or how you can really see, uh, you know, uh, finding a right investor. So I would say the most important thing to understand is 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 knowing where you are in your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned earlier, in this case, uh, uh, you know, finding a right. Do you really need an investor, or yeah. are you looking looking for a partner who can propel your business? So that's. That's something which you as a founder need to understand. And another thing I always, uh, or I would say most uh, investors will tell you that uh, you need to look at uh, you know, how you come across. If you yourself would really buy your business, if you're looking for an investor, uh, or if you're looking to raise fund, uh, think of it this way that you know, if somebody approaches you and say, hey, you know what, uh, this is a proposition, I'm looking for this kind of money, would you really, Put yourself in the in the shoes of the investor and see independently if if I would really invest in me, uh, because most uh, often than not, uh, investors always invest in the in in the founder right rather than yeah. investing in the idea. Yeah. Uh, because you know, like they say, ideas are overrated and 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 execution is the key, and and that's that comes really true uh, when you when you see the startup because founders are the ones who are going to really make things happen rather than the ideas because you come across a ton of ideas and nothing, you know, most of them would never see the day of light, but then uh, it's the founders and how you execute or uh, how you do your business, how you basically put the, those ideas in practice. And that really matters. And, and that's what I would say most investors or, or maybe the partners will look at that. And, you know, you need to associate yourself with people who you really believe in. So, so founders, how they come across, uh, the, their credibility and their, I would say, their background, uh, in their, their experience, their, their, their idea, mm. yeah, absolutely, that really matters. Mm. Uh, and 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 knowing also when to raise financing, I think I think most uh, businesses or let's say no, most uh, startups they come across, uh, they, they they come looking for funding maybe at a at a wrong time, not understanding what their business need is. So it's important to understand. Uh, what do you need and when do you really need it? So if you look at small businesses at a maybe at a bootstrap or perhaps as a pre-stage, uh, pre-seed uh, stage funding, they they would I think that the ideal partner perhaps would be friends and family for them. You know those mm. are the people who, who who are most close to you and then they are they are the ones who are going to believe you. Yeah, um, yeah. we say we say three Fs: family, friends, and maybe fools. <laughs> So yeah, I, I wouldn't go there, but then yes, <laughs> friends and family, I would say is the most. And then uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, incubations, uh, you know, incubator, uh, incubators available in the UAE. You know, there are some funded programs. If you if you fall in one of those ideas, perhaps you can approach the approach the one of the incubator, and they, they provide a lot of uh, you know support in terms of mentoring as well as you know some subsidized rates on various things and and maybe a little bit of uh, seed funding or kind of a pre-seed funding too uh, just to kick your idea started uh, and, and as you grow in your journey I think the next step for you would be to look at the institutional investors such as VCs uh, venture capitalists and they they perhaps would be and then again you know like I said there's no one right answer to it and then you need to look at where you are and how much funding you're looking to raise because VCs also you would have a pre you know early stage funding people and then you would have a late stage funding people and then you need to look at who you are targeting if you're finding yourself with the wrong audience then you perhaps uh, would be uh, really demotivated and not uh, getting things done so you need to understand where you fall uh, uh, and I think one thing which is very uh, perhaps not peculiar I would say it's it's most predominant in the U.S. is it is a family offices 
uh, you have a lot of family offices who would be uh, looking to maybe not not only the investment but also looking to do kind of a strategic partnership so that's also one of the areas you can look at and mm -hmm. also you always have angel networks uh, and like the name that's suggests true. if you find mm -hmm. one that's a miracle <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, with with this fall of SVB Bank, and I'm sure you've been following the news, um, it was primarily a bank which was funding startups, tech startups. So in, in US, in a mature market like US, you have a banking network which supports startups. Uh, whereas in this part of the world, uh, banks only support companies Okay, let me put it this way. This might be a little controversial. So they support companies which don't need money. Um, or companies which are in the maturity phase and they've been well established. Low risk clientele they have, and which I understand for the banking industry is, is good. So they don't have liquidity related issues here. Whereas in the US, we've seen what happens. Uh, now, what you mentioned angel investors, you mentioned VCs. You mentioned being part of a network, uh, family offices. Uh, all, for all of this, what is one thing common I see is having the right chain of network, the right people who can connect you to the right people with deep pockets or you know those who have funds uh, allocated yeah. to such companies. Now, I don't know, maybe someone in this, some of our attendees have brilliant ideas. Uh, maybe they've got a very nice business idea and maybe they've worked on the feasibility of it. And like you said, more than the cash flow projections, it's about the person, the background of that person and how committed and dedicated that person is to the execution of that idea. So what will you suggest for someone who is in this market, has a brilliant idea and needs capital for it? Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think you, you, um, in a way you put me on a spot. So uh, very precise uh, at, and I think uh, question on on what you uh, yeah you, you're right in a way uh, in a way when you said uh, the the UA market is not as mature as the others like US when I mean, it comes to funding the startups and and even that and not not only uh, banks are I would say that's a stretch. Uh, mm -hmm. There is no such. Uh, uh, such framework available uh, for startups in the UAE. But however, even when you look at uh, on the on the private investment side as well, be it VCs, be it angel investors, or the or the family offices, uh, you uh, I would say this market is still growing. This market is still developing, and then mm -hmm. uh, you know evolving. And you would have challenges um, if you're looking to raise fund. Uh, so, like I mentioned earlier, if if you are a startup. Uh, the first thing you need to understand where you are in your journey and if you're, and what kind of funding you're looking to raise because most of the times the expectation is, so for example, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, a startup comes with a just simple idea and then say, hey, you know what, I've got a brilliant idea and I need to, let's say $2 million to, mm -hmm. to, to kick that um, uh, off the ground. So when you start asking the right questions, where exactly this money goes and then you realize that the most money goes into into developing that idea as mm -hmm. well as customer acquisition. As when mm -hmm. I say customer acquisition, I say they simply put marketing. So, mm -hmm. so what that means is you are on the expense of an investor. You're trying to acquire a database or let's say do a marketing, which you have absolutely no idea whether that works or not. So, mm -hmm. so when when it when on the other side, when as an investor, when you look at this proposition that this looks it doesn't look very pro promising because um, uh, the the entire premise is 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 if you give me and I give me money, I test my idea, right? So, so you need to look at where you are exactly in your journey. Uh, having said that, uh, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, there you, there are multiple incubators available. Uh, if your idea is at a at a stage where where you just need a little bit of hand holding, a little bit of maybe network available, you've touched upon a very important point, which is uh, build your network. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, one of the things which you really need to do is build your network. And that not necessarily means only the investors, but also the also the right people. It could be your, your, your tentative customers, it can be your suppliers, it can be your uh, partners, it can, it can be your employees as well. So you need to build your network. Uh, so like they say, uh, you are as smart as 
as your VDS circle. So you need to learn from your circle. And, and one thing I can tell you is uh, if you have an idea and if you talk to right people, enough right people, mm -hmm. uh, you will reach a point where you will know where you're going wrong. Mm -hmm. And the reason is people give people tend to give unsolicited advice and then that's they will really tell you where you're wrong, right? And, and that's a free advisor, make use of it. Yeah, I mean, that's very nicely, uh, uh, I mean, put, and I hope this can bring in some more clarity into the thinking mindset. Yes, idea is just one part of this puzzle, and you you need to have a network of people, processes, organizations around you, which you need to put together, and then the start startup comes into being and becomes a reality. Uh, very, very nicely um, explained there. Now, one thing which always uh, crosses my mind is that what I have observed, experienced myself, um, and seen a lot of people in their different phases because we get to interact people who are at early or at the later stages of their career, you know, all different age groups. Um, now, when you are earning uh, on the lower side, uh, of the salary and perks, you have that drive, that incentive to take the risk of going for a business because you're hungry for more. But as you progress in your career and you start earning more, one becomes lazier. There are ideas, but maybe you're not thinking execution anymore. That hunger is gone. Now, is it like something which I've been thinking of lately or or do you think this is a common issue which people with good ideas, they just let them go off only because there's no hunger, there's no drive? Uh, uh, Tahadu, uh, it's, it's a very important question to ask. Um, and I would say you're right in a way um, that, you know, whenever you see uh, the, the evidence points this way, by the way, uh, if you look at the, the trend uh, and it tells you that, you know, people who are perhaps at a, at a certain stage in their life, they wouldn't want to change. They wouldn't want to. It's 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 the uh, it's the um, uh, you know the the comfort level which they build, of develop over time, and then they don't want to change that. And that really there is nothing nudging them to uh, to to move their their foot to the other side and see you know how how what that brings. Uh, and also you know uh, the it, it's it's uh, it's important to understand. Uh, what entrepreneurship uh, really brings to the table, uh, I would say, you know, as a, as a mindset, you you have a different mindset when you are employed. You have a very different mindset, and when you are employed, I've been on the both sides, and then I can tell you that it's a, it you know it it may not it may look similar, but then they are poles apart, and there there are huge differences in terms of the how you look at the business and how how the perspective is completely different. Uh, so, for example, uh, you know. When you look at simple risk as an uh, 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 item as a risk, uh, as an employee, you tend to always cover your, you know, uh, cover uh, your risk as much as you can, and then try to try not to make mistakes. But that may not work for you if you are a, if you are an employer or if you are a, an, a, a, if you are an entrepreneur. And if you start avoiding every risk uh, down the road, chances are you're not going to find the right thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I would say another thing which really changes is 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 how we as in technical skills as an employee you really value your technical skills. However, as an employer, you gotta ask yourself ask yourself a question whether this really means to your your customer your audience. So that's mm -hmm. where your your value is driven. And then you know this is how you it's it's just a perspective how you see things and. And and when you go and take the uh, and wear the hat of an employer, uh, one thing I can tell you is you you would be the you would be the person who is working the hardest in the organization. So if you're looking to uh, for a short shortcut that you you wouldn't be working, you would have more time, more money. Recently, somebody uh, mentioned it to me why you started the business, uh, and 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 I asked the same question: Why would you start the business? And he said, you know, I would want more money and more time. So mm -hmm. I said. I don't know about the money, but then I can tell you, you wouldn't have more time. Mm. Uh, so, so if you're looking to save time and have more time for yourself, for your family, uh, chances are initial few years, 
that you, you, you're you going to have to uh, sacrifice all that. And then you have to put that all in the business. Like I said, it's like raising a child. And there is no end to it. It's 24-7 job. Uh, and and I mean, if you're looking for a cutoff after a period of time, that, that really doesn't work that's in entrepreneurship. Uh, I, I mean, that's, that's how I can say that that really doesn't work. Uh, it's, it's a 24-hour, seven days a week. A, well, yeah. It's, it's a job that, that never ends. In fact, I was at one of these uh, dinners and, um, you know, people from different professions were there and some of them were partners uh, managing their own firms. So this thing came up about, you know, how Saudi has announced three-day weekend and four-day working week. Um, and he was like, you know, when I was an employee, uh, we would uh, try and convince our bosses and management that, you know, we need Saturday off. Because in the audit so, profession, you know, that's always been a controversial uh, topic. Yeah. But once you become an employer uh, and you go on the other side, now you are trying to convince people why it is important to work on Saturdays for the business. Um, so your perspective uh, completely changes. Absolutely. So here uh, there's a question from uh, Valid, and I'm glad questions have started to come earlier on in this, in this webinar. So he's saying that, 24-7 is, is a little hard to imagine, and I can understand that uh, it must be difficult, but obviously you need some time to rest and take a break and then come back with more energy because you need some rest to be fresh in your business. And I'm sure you'll have those moments as well. But what his question is, what me, what what is that, what makes you an entrepreneur? What's caused you to become an entrepreneur? Um, so, I mean, uh, like I said uh, earlier, it's really to each uh, his own, you know, kind of a thing where you basically you're triggered from your circumstances. Some people are driven from their ambition. Some people are driven from the from the, from the need, uh, you know, like how you mentioned earlier, if you have a requirement and you really need to uh, step on the other side to make the change. And then maybe that's one way uh, for you to just make a change. But then there are certain people who would be driven to create something of their own and then say, hey, you know, I'm going to leave a, leave a legacy behind, and then that's something which I want to do. Um, and and I think that that that's that's the that's a motivation behind it. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, you just to pick up on your uh, earlier uh, you know comment that you know there's no end to it. But honestly, uh, you you would be working if you are an entrepreneur. You would be working maybe if not if not five times oh. perhaps four, five, three, four times harder than you would be working as a, as an employee, as an employee. Or can and, I say the initial days is where you have to work a lot, put a lot of effort, and then gradually as the business kicks off, you can delegate to people and then maybe uh, take a little bit of a chill pill. Uh, so, yeah, agreed. Uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, but generally speaking, that time doesn't come um, uh, <laughs> early, right? So what happens is you start a business. Uh, there are stages to the business. One is just when you're, when you're really trying to uh, test the market. So, so once you've tested the market, the next idea is, uh, and, and then that's the time when you start running out of money. And then when you that's a survival stage where you really need to work hard to survive, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, you go on to the stage of where you have uh, now clients coming in or let's a business uh, you know, generated. And then you have enough to let's say maybe hire people, and then have a bigger, uh, you know, uh, setup in place. And that's that's where you the real drive starts. Where, where you start mm -hmm. basically, you know, you know, you have a competition with the others. You have a competition within where you have targets to uh, to meet. Where you want to set up, let's say, in, in two years' time, this is where I want to reach. And then you work back, and then uh, you you've already set up goals for yourself. But that's a time where you are already addicted to the idea where you have to work at 24 seven, that's always in your mind at the back of, of your mind. Even if you're sitting at home, uh, maybe watching Netflix, this, this will be at the back of your mind somewhere that, you know, I've got to do this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and one thing I would say, there are a couple of things which are very important when you, when you are an entrepreneur, you will always have good days and bad, bad days. Uh, one thing I had to learn was, you know, you need to be kind to yourself. Uh, you will have days, uh, when you, which are not so good, you yeah. gotta get up, uh, uh, pat your back, and then say, "Hey, you know what? Live to fight for another day. We'll 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 pick it up later." And then uh, also, you know, another thing which is which I've which I've seen entrepreneurs obsessing upon is 
is changing and, and making, trying to make something innovative, trying to you know, reinvent the wheel, do something different and you know, trying to do too much. Uh, mm. And that's not always the case where you, that, that you have to do. Uh, yeah. Like they say, success always leaves trails, right? So if you analyze and see what, what, what has worked for you over a period of time, and then you try to replicate those, those little successes and try to grow your business out of it, that can be really powerful. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, uh, like you were mentioning earlier in the introduction that you've worked for uh, the top, one of the top 10, you know, audit firms and the top firms in, you know, in this industry. Um, and then obviously you've left that and you've started something of your own. And perhaps that's a journey for everyone with a firm. They start from somewhere, they learn, they build connections, and some of them take the risk of starting something of their own. Some succeed and some fail. Um, Again, a question which uh, might be a little controversial that there could be people in your team who have that spark. Uh, they work under you, they learn from you, and one fine day you come to know they're starting something of their own. How would one tackle a situation? How does it feel? Uh, so uh, that's a that's an interesting way of putting it. See, uh, there are two things, you know, uh, always, uh, you, you can't really, um, stop somebody's success, right? That's that's a, that's a fundamental of it. If if somebody wants to has a drive and then uh, wants to do something of their own, that's why not. Uh, there is always a time for that, and there's always a market for that, and there's always new clients, new business for them. Uh, yeah. But but one thing, you know, if you start fearing that and try to, I would say, trickle it down and see how you can control that. Uh, what's what's uh, what that what that 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 going to do is is basically stopping you from hiring let's say smart people right mm-hmm. uh, not have the right people in your team and then uh, end up doing everything yourself so th- th- there is no uh, I-, I think there's this is it is just how you look at this thing and it's just a perspective of seeing it uh, perhaps uh, i would say that's not the right perspective to look at if mm-hmm. you focus on your business uh, there's always a right time and right uh, there's enough market for everyone if somebody wants to do it why not so there's enough fish in the pond and make alliances work with everyone collaborate those are open all the time absolutely uh, yeah that's that's the way we grow we all grow in this industry yeah that's that's very nice absolutely. Uh, okay i think we will go to the questions uh, i hope everyone's got some good idea about salman's journey and and thank you so much salman i mean for being so, uh, I mean, so, you know, you've been blunt, like you've told them like exactly this is what I've done and this is how I've done. And I think that's the beauty of it. So people can know it directly uh, from the horse's mouth that, you know, this is what I was doing earlier. This is what I'm doing it. And this is how I'm doing it. So it gives some very good idea to people in different age groups and professions. We'll move to uh, questions. If anybody's got any questions, please tell us. Okay, so there's a question from uh, Valid here, and uh, he's asked here that, is it important that an entrepreneur should have money to start? I, I mean, I know the short answer is yes to it, but Salman, how much money did you have when you were starting a business? <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, it's a, again, you know, uh, it's I mean, the, like you said, short answer could be no, but then I wouldn't uh, to that length and say no. Uh, there is all there are always ways of uh, looking at the business how you want to grow it for perhaps uh, i mean just just as an idea if if you really if this is some if you have an idea which you uh, want to start a business uh, which is of a particular nature and you have a skill which you really want to uh, which you can build a business around uh, you can always find the right partners to do that if you have a particular skill uh, there would be people who you can who, who you can uh, collaborate with who you can um, uh, you know, complement in their business, 
and help them solve their issues. If, if you find that kind of a business, obviously you can find partners uh, and that really doesn't require money. And then all that needs is basically sweat, sweat equity from your side, your effort and your uh, effort to, uh, to, to, to do the business or let's say to build that business. So uh, most businesses would require an investment. Uh, however, you might find your way in, in, in an opportunity which really doesn't require a business, uh, require, business uh, require money uh, because you are able to find yourself or let's say you are able to find the right partners. Is it right to say in, in case of services, the investment is a little lower when you compare it to trading businesses where you need upfront money to get the inventory and you know all of that? Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, certain businesses like, you know, if you're trying to do a kind of a trading business, mm -hmm. uh, you might require a, a larger sum of money uh, to invest in as compared to a service business, uh, which wouldn't really require that kind of money. Yeah. Uh, all that need, needs is basically for you to survive for an extended, for a, for a, for a number of, uh, let's say, months or, or, or for a period of time. Mm -hmm. and, and you build, you know, during that period, you build your business and, and your uh, your capability. Yeah, because it's like you said, it's the skill you are selling. It's the hours. Basically, yeah. your hours are the what's being charged out to the client yeah. in this case. Okay, I hope that's answered Walid bin Jaman's question. Now, Kasit Parker has asked another question is like how, and I think it's a very valid question uh, for someone who's got a good idea there and he's, he started up a company. Now, how will you get clients at an initial stage? I know you were talking about customer acquisition earlier, but execution side, how do we get clients? Uh so see, there are there are really two three ways of uh, getting a client, and then you can really uh, drill it down and then try to uh, you know make various branches to it, and then have a more you know you know uh, avenues. However, there are two three key areas where you can focus. Is one is your experience and the people who know you, basically your network. And one thing you're gonna find um, initially is, is is a trust. Uh, so like I said earlier. Uh, when you are entering into a market which is crowded, which is saturated, uh, people or customers also do their risk assessment. So for example, uh, let's say as, an, as a consulting business, take example of a consulting business. And I approach Taha and then say, hey, Taha, I know you. Uh, can you give me your, uh, you know, maybe consulting work? And then Taha comes back and says, you know, hey, what? Uh, I, I looked at it. I spoke to my people. And then, you know what? Uh, if you end up, uh, you know, messing that work, you know, that's going to reflect bad on me. Uh, you might be good at what you do. However, I need to do my risk assessment. Now, look at the situation. If a top 10 firm comes to Taha and he gives a business to, uh, Taha gives a business to that top 10 consulting firm, and if they make the same, same mistake versus you make that, that mistake, uh, it is much safer for Taha to say, you know what, I went went with the best people, right? And if they make a mistake, what can I do about it? And versus if he gives you business, and then so so what I'm coming to is clients or your your, your people who even you know are going to do their risk assessment. So you gotta understand what is it that you can deliver to them uh, as as an individual or as as a company which really provides them value. So you need to start asking your these questions. Uh, so, so, so the first thing is going to be the people you know, uh, people you have worked with or your or your network. And the other is there are multiple ways of now. Let's say and now I'm not really sure what kind of business you are you you are referring to. Uh, if you are in a FMCG business, if you are maybe a, a, a kind of a consulting business, you have various avenues uh, even on online and even on networkings uh, to to fall upon. But then I think the two major areas for b2b businesses would be um, networking and 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 the, and the and the and the credibility that you build perhaps as if, if even if it is online hmm. um i remember when i was in the investment industry i won't um, you know I, we met one of the finance ministers of one of the countries i won't name the country for obvious reasons he said something which uh, sticks to me till date so they wanted to conduct some due diligence 
uh, on one of the you know potential opportunities and he said look i'm not going to work with so we suggested some company names we felt you know is this finance minister of a country would want some big names out there he said no to all the names and he said i want someone uh, you know coming from uh, you know a small or a medium sized consulting firm uh, because they will do more work for for the price we will pay as compared to the the bigger names out there in the market so he uh, changed my perspective that one sentence actually changed my oh, that's perspective true that it's not actually the names it's the work it's the people it's the it's the value for money as we as we say um so yeah brilliant any, any, any more questions this is a good chance for all of you who've got some ideas and uh, you want us to vet those ideas you want us to discuss those ideas you can uh, bring it up right now and maybe we can have a quick chat over it in another 3 or 4 minutes we will be ending the webinar so uh, if you have any questions any more questions please ask so what year did you do your uh, accs alman um so yeah it was a quite a long back i think well, i think 2009 somewhere yeah, oh wow completed and um and then you know I have a membership. I think it's about uh, perhaps twenty seven ten somewhere. Wow. So yeah, long ago. Long ago. Uh, so I, I'm not really sure if those institutions are still um, <laughs> working. I've, I've not been in touch with those guys. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Uh, so, it's, it's, yeah. it's good. It's actually uh, it's good to see how people have progressed. So if you qualified in 2010, it's been 13, 14 years now. So it's, it, it, this must give an idea to our listeners, our audience also that in 13 years, that growth for someone who had qualified at that time, there's so much of potential out there in the market. You just need to tap it. Uh, there's Absolutely. another question. Uh, and and uh, Adnan has said, Dr. Adnan, sorry, Dr. Adnan has, you know, thanks. Uh, he's passed his thanks. So you're welcome. And thanks to you for participating. Uh, Walid has asked another question is like, do you recommend partnership with other partners or do you think it's best to start alone? I think you've mentioned that, you know, having uh, right people and sweat so equity. Like, and I, yeah. you know, it, it's again, it's again about, uh, you know, personal mm -hmm. choice. Uh, certain people are they looking to, and also it depends on the, on the type of business which you're doing. Uh, most businesses, I would say, um, rely heavily on partnerships and that's, that's the easiest way to grow. Um, having and I'm somebody somebody who believes in partnerships and who believes mm -hmm. in uh, collaborations, and 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 I think that's the uh, it's 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 personal as well as the the business need uh, too. Um, it's a personal choice as well as a business requirement. For certain businesses, uh, you you would definitely need partners to grow. You know, if for example, if you are into a business which really uh, requires a heavy capital uh, uh, kind of an investment. And that's something which you don't have. Then obviously you need a partner who can provide that for you. Yeah. And uh, and even in a consulting business, uh, I would say you know uh, if, if you are if you if you are somebody who believes in partnerships. But however, it's important to understand uh, who you partner with. Uh, most partnerships uh, do not succeed uh, because of obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, the differences comes at a later stage. So you've got to ask yourself questions. Why are you getting into a partnership? Is, is it a long-term strategy? Is it a short-term strategy? So you need to have that figure out at a very initial stage. This morning in business break, Fast, I mean, link to Walid's question and your response to this question. Today in business breakfast, uh, one of the radio hosts got a CEO of one of the companies. I'll not name the company again. And the CEO was the founder and obviously the sole shareholder of the company. And she decided to go with a part, with a sellout of the business. So 80% of the business was sold and then she became a minority shareholder in the business. Yeah. So she was asked this, she was put this question forward uh, by the host that, you know, you were a major shareholder, only shareholder, and now you're sharing this company with some. Uh, so what will you recommend? What will you advise people? So he said, look, it's very difficult. It's very different now because I'm not the decision maker anymore. I'm a minority shareholder. So you either keep the entire business with yourself. Uh, and if you want to sell it, 
then you be the major shareholder don't be in the minority because you build that baby and now to be on the other side and you're not you're just looking at what's going on and you don't have the power or the authority over it um, so i think end of the day like you said it all comes down to you as a person are you do you gel well with people are you okay with sharing power and authority decision making are you collaborative in working or not or you're like a sole person you know i'll work alone in my uh, and knowing you like we met couple of times now i think you are that kind where you are more collaborative i guess in terms of your approach has been this i guess yeah. and and the how also you you can ask yourself questions uh, in terms of uh, how you see uh, what what kind of value the partners bring so you know it's a it's you know i mean people say that you know if you want a full uh, full small piece or or 50% of the extra large so that's it's entirely up to you if you, if you really see value uh in in collaboration and then obviously you're happy to share that um brilliant thank you so much salman for your time uh, really appreciate this and i hope everyone has enjoyed the session tonight and there is something for everyone to pick i've learned uh, a lot so thank you so much i've enjoyed this thoroughly my colleague sajma has uh, passed on the details if you want to get in touch with kaplan Uh, in any way you want us to connect you to salman um you we we will do that we will do it right away whatever it is uh, you want to connect to us you want to connect to salman we'll be more than happy to do that so thank you very much again to all the participants it was nice engaging and some good questions out there so i will be ending this webinar now and uh, please follow us on our socials our linkedin we do these webinars time to time like i said every month we do these webinars so this could be of benefit to you and your friends so thank you and good night